we're going to look at the difference between job and process costing as we start the chapter on process costing. So let's think of how jobs flow through a factory, for instance. Um, we have department one or processing department one. Perhaps there is another processing department two, maybe even another one. And in a typical um, job costing system, there might be costs associated with the work done in department one, the work done in department two, and so on. But these costs are all tracked by job. They all accrue to the job. So take job A619, for example. All of these costs would accrue to this job. So we can say that the costs accumulate by job, and they're all tracked by the job cost sheet. Now you remember this. This is where we track all the direct materials for this job, all the labor for this job, and we assign overhead, whether it's one plant-wide overhead rate or specific department overhead rates. They're applied to each job. So that once we come up with our total job cost, we can divide that by the number of units in that job, and we get our cost per unit. This is chapter 5. We already know this. Now, instead of the jobs accumulating by job, or the cost accumulating by job, they now accumulate by department under process costing. So, we would track all the costs in department 1 and divide by the number of units of production that leave department 1. And that would be our cost per unit of that unit that's just done in Department 1. Those units then head on to Department 2. We'll track any extra costs in Department 2. We'll add it to whatever we transferred in. We'll have our total Department 2 costs divided by the units of production. And that will be our cost per unit. And we'll do the same thing in Department 3. Now you'll notice that the costs are not accumulating to any particular job but the costs are accumulating by department for a period of time. A job may start in January and end in December, but all the costs would apply to that job. Here, all the costs apply, apply to a particular department for a particular period of time. Because every, every output is exactly the same. There's no point in tracking costs to each individual unit, right? Costs accumulate by department. In process costing. And we're going to get into a, a more detail about how we figure out the, the cost per unit of each of these items. We do this and we follow the, the costs through a department with something called a production report. Every department produces a production report. And it may be monthly. So for the month, we, the production report itemizes the total costs for the month, for the period, and it also itemizes the total units produced for the period. So figuring out our cost per unit, you can see at a high level, figuring out the cost per unit as well. If you spent this much money in the month and you made this many units in the month, I think I can figure it out. Well, it's not that straightforward, but yes, that's the right track. So we can think of processing department number one as being the first thing that happens in a, uh, in a, um, in a, in a line. And the raw materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead are incurred in processing department number one and are all placed within that department in that time frame. The output of processing department one is then transferred to processing department number two. And when it's transferred, when that output is transferred, all the costs are in that product. So they become a cost input in department number two, but department number two may also add more raw materials, more direct labor, and more manufacturing overhead to what was transferred in. The output of processing department number two may then be transferred to processing department number three. And the cost, whatever gets transferred from processing department number two to processing department number three, that cost is recognized as a cost coming in to Department 3, and Department 3 may or may not add more materials, labor, or manufacturing overhead, depending on what gets done, but it's possible that they can, that 
the three manufacturing costs can get added at any level. Once they leave processing department number three, let's just say that they're done and they're transferred to the finished goods inventory. So we see that we have the same accounts except for one little detail with the work in process that we will get to. So let's look at our flow of costs because I did mention that the work in process is different. Remember with job cost we have one work in process account. Well now with process costing we have a work in process account for each department. There's work in process for department A, here's work in process for department B, and here is work in process for department C. So we have different work in process accounts for each department. We still have our raw materials or our direct materials. We'll still incur direct labor costs and manufacturing overhead costs. But you'll recall that when we add direct labor and manufacturing overhead together, we get a category called conversion costs. This is from chapter 2, so if you forget about conversion costs, you can flip back to chapter 2 and have a look at that. Now, these raw material costs can enter and these labor costs and these manufacturing costs can enter work in process in any of the departments. So they can enter into work in process in Department A. They may enter into Department B or Department C. Now, some processing uh, has it such that all the raw materials enter in, in process uh, work in process A, and then there's no more raw materials added, just labor and manufacturing overhead. The output from A becomes the input for B, the output for B becomes the input for Department C, and we say that these are transferred in costs. <clears throat> they're not incurred in the department, they're transferred in to the department. And finally, of course, when if we assume that work in process account C is the last step before we have a finished good, that output then becomes the input for the finished goods inventory account, just to show that it's the same flow. And then from finished goods, it goes to cost of goods sold, etc. So let's look at the journal entries that would follow this through. Being that we have multiple work and process accounts, how do we deal with that? Well, look, raw materials can go into any of the work and process accounts. So work and process can increase. Work and process for Department B can increase. For Department C and increase. And all of these come out of raw materials inventory. There. That's the same as we did in job costing. Labor, same thing. Labor can enter in any of the departments, and most of the time you do have this. Some departments are heavily automated, some are more labor intensive, but the work in process A account, the work in process B account, and for department C uh, can all experience labor costs. And there's our wages payable. So it's the same journal entry, except we just have more work in process accounts. That's all. Our manufacturing overhead. <clears throat> well, now, this is, this is where we have to think a little bit, but just a little. Uh, notice that it can enter anywhere as well. So it can enter in Department A, the work in process account for Department B, or the work in process account for Department C. And it all comes out of the manufacturing overhead account for Department A or for Department B or for Department C. Let's keep that in mind. Now, do we use actual or applied? Because this is process costing, we don't have to track it to a specific job. Do we use pro uh, actual or applied? Well, it turns out that the majority of process costing firms will still use applied overhead because costs are not constant throughout the year, especially overhead costs. They're not constant throughout the year. So each processing department will have a predetermined overhead rate. Same thing we did in Chapter 5. Don't be thrown by this. Don't say, oh, that's really complex. No, it's not. It's the same thing we had in Chapter 5. These are just multi-department multi overhead rates. That's all it is. Let's look at these transferred in costs. The, the um, work in process B account is increased when work leaves work in process from Department A. When work leaves Department B, it enters Department C. So Department C will increase, Department B will decrease. When it leaves Department C, finished goods inventory increases, and work in process for Department C decreases. 
When it leaves finished goods, cost of goods sold increases. Finished goods inventory decreases. This is the same thing we had in job cost. So all of these raw material, all of these manufacturing costs uh, right here begin by entering the process in department A, which then flows to B, which then flows to C, which then flows to finished goods inventory. Thank you.